Around the turn into the 20th century, women were not encouraged to flourish. But Carrie Lena Fombro was not typical. With wise support from her mother, she pursued an education. So she taught. And at an Alabama college in 1893, she met William Grant Still Sr., who also taught there. They fell in love, they married, they bore William Grant Still Jr. Then only three months later, the father died. But Carolina Fombro was resilient, resourceful, practical. She returned to her mother's home in Little Rock. She continued teaching while her mother helped raise young William. Nine years passed before she met and married Charles B. Shepperson, a railway postal clerk. Charles took her son in as his own and nurtured the boy's love of music. Such was the cloth from which William Grant Still Jr. was cut and tailored. At 15, William studied violin and taught himself six other instruments. At the behest of his mother, he studied medicine at Wilberforce University, but transferred to Oberlin Conservatory of Music before finishing. He studied with many renowned composers of the time who taught him to orchestrate, arrange, compose, names few of us recognize today. But how many of us heard of Still before today? Hopefully you have. Hopefully this story is old news, because that is what a man of Still's skill deserves. After a short interruption from the Navy in 1918, he lived to compose another 60 years. In that time, he created over 150 pieces, and he accomplished many firsts. You probably figured it out on your own. All of these accomplishments are enough, more than enough. So how could all of this occur without most of us knowing? Because of the missing salient asterisk, the extremely talented William Grant Still Jr. was the first African-American man to do these things. He was a successful creative musician born in 1895, later called the Dean of Afro-American Composers. But let us rewind our story of this remarkable man to 1930. Through the 1930s, Still created much music in the popular realm, but the complexity and sophistication of his musical mind always shone through. In 1936, Still published a piano work called Three Visions. The second of the three is called Summerland. His use of parallel harmonies is informed by Debussy with occasional jazzy color chords, reminding us of his early work with W.C. Handy's blues band. The gentle, undulating rhythms evoke those in Debussy's impressionist Claire de Lune. The clear, beautiful melody plays around with rhythms, but never gets too complicated. There are no distractions as you relax into the scene. So sit in an Adirondack chair or on the edge of a pier, or reach your hand over the side of a rowboat, dipping your toes or fingers into the cool, refreshing water. Watch the ripples move out in that familiar, relaxing.